What if I told you only English people can be considered white? Even one of the founding fathers of America, Benjamin Franklin right here, would agree with me. In the 1750s, he said that the British made the principal bodies of white people on the face of the earth. Here he states that other people like the French, the Swedes, the Germans, the Poles, the Russians were not considered whites. They were considered the other whites. Or in another term, swarthy. The category was used to cover up people that descended from continental Europe. Benjamin Franklin was against immigration, specifically the Germans. He simply did not like the Germans coming into America. Let me explain. This is what it means when people say race is a social construct. Whiteness has nothing to do with culture or ethnicity. Whiteness is an economic and political allegiance to uphold colonialism. And I'm not here to hate on anyone. Just educate. Facts don't care about feelings. And it's usually Anglo-Saxon descent that is considered white. What if I told you only English people can be considered white? Even one of the founding fathers of America, Benjamin Franklin right here, would agree with me. In the 1750s, he said that the British made the principal bodies of white people on the face of the earth. Here he states that other people like the French, the Swedes, the Germans, the Poles, the... Shalom. Kohlaim la Yehava. Bahashem. Yehava Shai. Bahashem. Kadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yehovah, in the name of his son and our Lord and Savior, Yehovah Shai, much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work and truth and sincerity, risk under lies and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, the original rulers of Europe. So Jacob is the farmer of all things, the Israelites. As a matter of fact, that term Anglo-Saxon goes back to Barathath Yash, Barathath Ash, which is sons of the covenant. The Israelites are the sons of the covenant. Back to the Hebrew, Barat of Ash. So the Israelites are the sons of the covenant that ruled Great Britain, that ruled Europe. So these terms that Benjamin Franklin used in his letter describing the Germans the French, the Swedes, the Polish, and the Russians, those are Jake's, the sons of Jacob. We're going to go into some of these terms. Let's go here. Let's look at these pictures first. These are the pictures of the nobles of Jake, the Israelites that ruled Europe for about a thousand years. And the Bible says in Revelations chapter 20 that Satan would be bound for a thousand years. So you'll see that the Edomite is a servant here. They were servants, they were slaves. When you look at the word Slavs, S-L-A-V-S, it goes back to slaves, the Slavic people in Europe. Look at the royalty and the servants behind him. Mathematicians. Leaders. Knights. Mathematicians. These were the priests. The kings. See that? Why do you think they were called knights, dark skin? And they brought terror into the areas that they rode their horses through whenever, whenever they were gone to apprehend someone and bring them to the king's courts to stand judgment. Great marksmen, which goes back to our forefather, Jacob. Lawyers, 
princesses, kings, ruling from about 300 AD as late as 1800. The last Israelite rulers began to fall and get sold into slavery. Matter of fact, Seville, Spain was called the reverse slave trade. Where as early as the 1490s, Israelites began to be sold into slavery out of Europe. This is beautiful. Lawyers, blacksmith, chefs, advisors, holy men. Check this out. Jake wearing the crown. So in Genesis 27, Esau was told that he shall serve his brother Jacob but the yoke shall be broke from off his neck and he shall inherit the fatness of the earth, which is now. They were subdued under King David and they were brought down into garrisons under Israelite rulership and authority. And they were subdued and brought down during the so-called dark ages or medieval times. Look at the fine attire. King's garments. I shared a dream that I had with um, Yahweh the Maccabees. I saw a body that was enclosed in a glass case. <coughs> enclosed in a glass case with no head. And the body had king's garments. Beautiful garments of nobility. And the spirit told me, that's you in that glass coffin. It looked like a rectangular shaped, clear glass coffin with no head. So in 1789, the French were brought down by a revolution that was stirred up by the Jesuits, Amalek that started an insurrection to take down Jake, Israelites, out of France in 1789. So we are not savages, Gentiles, three-fifths of a man, second-class citizens. This is the clothing that I saw that body wearing without a head and clothes in a rectangular shape clear glass coffin and the spirit said this is you it was very terrifying to say the least so we fell and esau broke the yoke from off his neck pursuant to genesis 27 and he has been in rulership since around 14 1453, the last Israelite strongholds fell around Constantinople, which is modern day Istanbul, Turkey, and taken down by the Ottoman Turks, which are Edomites that predominantly practice Islam. Even unto this day, many of the modern day so-called Turkish people now, we still have Israelites scattered in those countries. And I kept this image because this is the image that describes our Lord and Savior and King of Kings, Yahushai Hamashiach, whom the world ignorantly called Jesus. And if I'm not mistaken, IUIC posted this image here. Let's go into the Bible. So Benjamin Franklin uses terms like swarthy and tawny to describe the Germans, the Polish, French, the Russians, the Swedes. Swarthy. 
swarthy, dark skinned, dark, brown or black in color. That's when it goes into the English. We were called black. <coughs> Tawny. This is Benjamin Franklin's 1751 letter. Tawny. This thing is messing with me. Tawny is of color, brownish to light brown color. Let's go from there. Let's go to John 8 and 31. Then said Yahawashine to those Jews which believe on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. The elect are continuing and suffering patiently through faith. Verse 32, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So slavery starts in our mind, believing that we are three-fifths of a man, second-class citizens, when in reality, we are of a regal class of people, a noble royal bloodline. So now we are mentally free through the word of truth, through Bible prophecy. <coughs> Let's go here. Second Peter three, excuse me, second Peter two and one. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Damnable heresies, like a false image of the Messiah. That false image is tied to a false doctrine. Let's look up heresies. Heresies. Comes from the Greek. Strong's G139, Hyresis, Hyresis. Okay, it's not giving me what I want here. Heresy, disunion, abstract. Let's look up this word, disunion. Disunion, breaking up of something. Breaking up, such as a federation. So heresies are connected to false doctrines, false teachings. Let's read it again. Second Peter 2, verse 1. But there were false, but there were false prophets among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. So denouncing white supremacy, denouncing the false doctrine behind it is viewed as evil. Let's <coughs> go oh, here. Psalms 85 verse 8. I will hear what the Most High, the Lord, will speak for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. 
folly, it starts with that false image. I, I had gotten a strike for rebuking that image. My main channel received a strike and a two-week suspension. I will hear what God, the Lord, will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. So glory starts with the true doctrine and the image of the Holy Messiah, the Savior. The doctrine and the record that bear witness of him go together. How do we know that? Well, let's go to 1 John. 1 John 5 and 10. 1 John 5, let's go to verse 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar because he believeth not the record that the Most High gave of his Son. So the record that describes his son matches this image in front of you. Now, are we to bow down before an image? Absolutely not. But this is a sketch, kind of like a police sketch. If you're doing an investigation that matches the description of the Messiah spoken of in Revelation chapter 1, Verses 14 and 15. Let's go ahead and read that next. 1 John 5 and 11. And this is the record that the Most High have given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. So we must believe the record of him. <clears throat> Let's go to Revelations 1. This is why John 7 and 38 says, He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow living waters. So the doctrine matches the true record of him. Let's go to Revelations 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. So his eyes looked like wine, like, like a light red wine, and his hair on his head is woolly and his beard the beard is white white as snow <coughs> that matches what his father looks like spoken of in Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 and Daniel chapter 10 verses 5 and 6 verse 15 and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burn in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. So the feet look like burnished brass. Brass is a derivative of brown, but as if they burn in a furnace. So he is dark skin. <coughs> look up brass. Feet, brass feet. Used to be a popular image that popped up. 
And now it doesn't show up on uh, Google anymore. It used to pop up automatically. One moment. Yeah, let me see. Okay. Let's do it this way then. See, they're not showing it anymore. It used to pop up real quick. Um, frustration, frustration. Yeah, they're not. They're not showing it. Okay, here we go. Brass that have been burned or appeared as if they had been burned in a furnace. So he's of every dark skin. Remember, brass is a derivative of brown. So we're seeing what the image of our Lord and Savior look like. The record that was left of him. We can see it clearly. All right, let's continue. Oh, I've never seen this one before. Yep, going to continue. So let's go from there. Back to Psalms 85. Let's go to verse... Nine. Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. So the truth causes the picture to come together. All the pieces of the puzzle come together, which leads to the salvation of Jacob and the restoration of the nation of Israel as a whole, which brings judgment and recompense to the other nations and deliverance to the Israelites. And the motherland is reunited with her children, the Holy Land. Jerusalem and the surrounding areas around Jerusalem, the promised lands. Let's go to verse 11. Psalms 85, verse 11. Truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. So truth is springing out of the artifacts of the ancient relics of the statues. A picture is worth a thousand words. And we looked at these, these pictures. Where, where were they? Right here. We looked through these pictures. So the earth helps the woman. Not only were we scattered to the four corners of the earth, which protected the remnant, from being slaughtered that preserve those that fled and were scattered into all nations. But also the relics that survive iconoclasm. Iconoclasm is the destruction and whitewashing of all the original images. So the earth helping the woman is twofold. Psalms 85, verse 11. Truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good and our land shall yield her increase. So the Israelites are going to be reestablished back into the promised lands. That's a part of salvation. That's a part of the covenant 
and word of promise. Let's go to verse 13. Righteousness shall go before him and shall set us in the way of his steps. So we're going to be made like him, the horn of our salvation, which is Yahweh Shai. Let's get ready to close out. Well, think I've already beat a dead horse to death. So when we read Second Peter 2, verse 1 and 2, damnable heresies are the false doctrines and the false image, the false record of our Lord and Savior. So now we have a true depiction of our, our Lord and Savior, of the Hamashiach, or the Anointed One, that matches the record given to John on the island of Patmos, the record left of him. Revelation goes back to the root word reveal, which means to peel back, uncover. So hopefully this lesson, oh, by the way, the term white was created in the state of Virginia in the year 1681. If you were deemed white, you could testify in court. You can vote. You can purchase and sell firearms. You can purchase large swaths of land. You were given large swaths of land if you were deemed white. And if you were deemed black, you could not purchase firearms or sell firearms. You could not testify in court. You could not purchase land. And you could not marry the women outside or the so-called white woman. But the so-called white man could marry the Native American women and the so-called Negro women. So privilege was created. And white is a socially engineered construct, a made a man-made, made-up nationality, a veil of deception. Let's get one more because of that. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go to Isaiah. 25, verse 7. The book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verse 7. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. So this veil of deception being called black Negro, Native American, Indian, Japanese, Chinese. It's all made up. Let's go into that word veil. Veil comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H, 4541. Masecha. Masecha. This is heavy. A cast image, a covering image. So we were given a false image of the Messiah and of our nationalities. A veil, molten image, image, God's. So even the word Danish goes back to dark skin or color. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakwakadash, Barakatham. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharela and the Bad Babao. We got next. 
Lord willing. Shalom.